Hello, I'm Ugeli Meini from LIMC CNRS uh, from France, and I'm here to present our work with uh, Sofia Koblianskaya, Johanna Vasilescu, and Laurence de Villers. Our article is entitled Nudges with Conversational Agents and Social Robots A First Experiment with Children at a Primary School. So, our main focus here is nudges, which I will explain in a bit, but basically, we study the influence of conversational agents and robots, and we do so in a specific experiment protocol. This project is also part of the project Bad Nudge, Bad Robot, which focuses on the modeling of nudging strategies within a spoken dialogue, and is funded by Data AI Institute. It's also part of the AI Chair Human, which stands for Human Machine Affective Interaction Ethics. So I'm going to quickly go through the different parts that we will see during this presentation. So first, after a quick introduction, I will explain the experimental framework and methodology used. Then we will see how we build quantifying nudging strategies. Next, I will describe the corpus that we obtained, and then I will show our results. Finally, I will explain the automated nudging dialogue system that we intend to build and then conclude. So, I guess it's time to explain what a nudge is. The notion of nudging first came to light in 2008 and has been mainly studied in behavioral economy. Seller and Sunstein define a nudge as any aspect of the choice architecture that alters people's behavior in a predictable way without forbidding any options or significantly changing their economic incentives. The key idea here is that nudges influence through indirect suggestions which can affect the behavior and decision making. Ah, uh, and this influence is hard to measure and often disregarded. And it's important to note that nudging doesn't restrict your choices and usually rely on cognitive biases like attentional bias or memory bias. We study here nudges in the context of the increasing usage of conversational agents and robots. Nudging is a tool which can have positive or negative consequences, and our end goal is to study it as an adaptation strategy in a spoken dialogue system. Here are our main goals. So our end goal is to build an automatic dialogue system able to nudge, uh, we also want to measure the influence of nudges exerted by conversational agents and robots on humans. And finally, we want to raise the awareness of their use or misuse and open an ethical reflection on their consequences. For this purpose, we conducted an experiment in a primary school with 90 children, with ages ranging from 5 to 10. Children interacted with three types of agents, an adult, a conversational agent, which was a Google Home adapted for the experiment, and a social robot, Pepper, from SoftBank Robotics. The experiment was conducted towards a Wizard of Oz procedure, and the dialogue was scripted for both the robot and the Google Home speaker. Each experiment was divided into three parts. The first part was the dictator game, which we will explain later. The second part was an open question, such as, have you ever seen schoolmates fighting for marbles? This part aimed at testing the amount of confidence a child attributes to the discussion partner. Finally, the last part was a quiz where specific dialogue strategies were tested. During this experiment, we had a specific interest in two nudging strategies, which I will explain in a bit, using anchoring techniques. Our main goals for this experiment were to measure bias children may have towards machines and also measure the trust they will put into their interlocutor. Here is the design of the experiment. So for the dictator game, each child was given 10 marbles and asked how much he or she wanted to keep for himself or herself and how much he or she was willing to give to another person. We then tried to influence the decision with two successive nudges which were, in random order, the peer effect and the first-person strategies. For instance, for the peer effect strategy, we told the child, you know, you chose 
x number of marbles, but most children will have chosen y number of marbles, and then we just observed his reaction. If the child changed his or her choice, the nudge was considered effective, otherwise no. So here is a little picture of the experiment with a robot interlocutor. The first part of our experiment, the dictator game, enabled us to get concrete and quantifiable data on how much children were influenced by their interlocutor. This game is a really well-known game in economy and gives a measure of altruism which was a bit high in our case. The children gave back about 45% of their marbles instead of the usual 20-30%. Half of the children were nudged during each nudging attempt, but 30% of the children were never nudged. Our results also showed that children were more influenced by non-human interlocutors. To further quantify the impact of a nudging strategy, we designed a nudging metric, which basically measured how much, in terms of marbles, the child's choice got closer to the value of the nudge given by the interlocutor. This metric was then normalized to show whether the child completely complied with the value given during the nudge or only approached it. Here is the data collected during the dictator game. As you can see, children were more influenced by the robot and the speaker, especially during the second nudge. This experiment was also the opportunity to collect a corpus of interactions specific to nudges. We were also really interested in any hint or information we could detect in the voice of the child or the user of our future system that will help us infer his her reaction to a nudge. The corpus was then annotated with different labels at the speaker turn level in order to further correlate the characteristics of the user state at the turn and paralinguistic features. The labels were used to train classifiers with machine learning techniques in order to automatically detect the audio information that will help the dialogue system to better assess the state of the user. What we considered mental states were mostly emotions which were based off putschik wheels of emotions. Here is how the dialogues were annotated with the software Elan. In order to measure the quality of the annotations, we used a control protocol. Five files of each category, so 15 in total, were annotated by two annotators, then the Cohen's kappa coefficient was calculated. Uh... We obtained a substantial agreement with a score of 0.76 for the emotion annotations and 0.68 for the doubt annotations. You can notice that few divergences were observed for opposite categories, which we tried to classify with machine learning models later on. So this is a good sign that these annotations may be relevant for classification models. We intend, however, to reproduce this control protocol several times in the future. Next, we focused on the detection of mental states, affect bursts, and language register based on paralinguistic information as part of a future automatic dialogue system. We first used the software OpenSmile to extract relevant features in order to train the models. The models implemented were SVM, so Support Vector Machine, and Random Forest. Each classifier had two or three classes to classify, and the results given for each set are the mean F1 scores, which evaluate how well a classifier discriminates one class from another. The results show that some classes are more easily distinguishable than others, on the basis of the paralinguistic features. Uh, one constraint the classifiers had to cope with was the noise in some speech chunks because of the noisy environment of the school. This brings some robustness to the models and more realistic scores. Uh, given the performance of the classifiers, they will be used as a weighted input for the dialogue manager of our dialogue system. The next part shows the contribution of nonverbal information for mental states characterization. Field poses are key elements in dialogue construction and management. Here, the field poses are considered in three positions within the speaker turn, that is, initial, internal, and final. As for the silent poses, 
We consider so far the speaker turn internal ones. We can see that the number of hesitations and pauses is higher for specific labels. Uh, these results point out the potential correlation between the incidence of nonverbal information and user states, and it is promising for further integration within the automatic detection experiments. The next step of this project is then to build an automated dialogue system. Here we show how the structure of a spoken dialogue system with reinforcement learning algorithm would look like. For our system, we want a special focus on paralinguistics, such as detecting emotions and other relevant mental states, an adaptation of the nudging strategy, and a simple efficient reinforcement learning algorithm, as we intend to work with a small dataset. To conclude, this article is our first answers to our two main objectives, that is design an automatic nudging system and measure the nudging influence of machines on humans. Uh, we have described a preliminary Wizard of Oz experiment built for collecting a corpus of dialogues in a real-life situation. We have shown a detection system based on paralinguistic features. We have designed simple metrics for quantifying nudges. We have shown that conversational agents and robots appear more influential in nudging children. And we have also explained that nonverbal information, and we have also seen that nonverbal information could be a promising lead to improving the automatic detection of the user state. In the future, more data and experiments are needed to confirm the tendencies observed. We also intend to test nudge in other contexts, for example, with a different population. That is all. Thank you for your attention.